Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. If you follow along my vlogs, you follow along my videos, then you will know that I have been doing Sydney Cummings three month summertime fine program. I finished it today. Today is August 4th, Sunday. I finished it a day late, but I am so proud of myself for doing the 90 day fitness challenge. I'm feeling really good. I'm feeling really strong. And I know that a lot of you guys have had a lot of questions. That was very cringe. But a lot of you guys have asked me questions over the years as to how I maintain my workout routine, what my workout routine is. We're gonna talk about all things fitness today. I'm kind of gonna give you like my mantras. I'm also gonna share what fitness programs I've done in the past, what's worked for me. And I'm kind of just gonna give you like hopefully feel good rundown on how you can get into a better headspace, fitness journey, all that kind of stuff. Because I feel like it can kind of be overwhelming, especially when we look at social media. You know, there's so many people out there who are fitness gurus, personal trainers, want to give you guys like a more realistic approach to fitness because it is not something that just happens overnight and it is not something that you can simply just rely on motivation in order to do on a day-to-day -day basis but we're gonna get into it I'm gonna give you all of my tips I have about nine but to be honest I'll probably think of a few along the way I'm sorry if the lighting is changing in this video of course every time I sit down to film a video a storm rolls in I'm 33 years old I've been working out for about 20 years and I would say that the most important thing to do when starting your fitness journey is to figure out your why. Now my why has changed throughout all the years that I've been working out. I started going to the gym when I was a freshman in high school. My why was because I wanted to be skinny. I was born in 91, grew up in the 90s, mainly the early 2000s where you know Britney Spears was fat shamed when she looked hot AF during that, um, what was it, her VMA performance. So that was just the culture. Maybe makeover shows, you name it. I just feel like women were always being judged and shamed according to their appearance. And so when I started my fitness journey, I just wanted to be skinny. Gave me the motivation. What got me into creating this daily habit? Was it a healthy habit? No. Was I well balanced in terms of nutrition and food? I was not. But my why, which was to be skinny, was what pushed me to kind of create a workout routine and get working out to be a part of my my lifestyle. A better why could be your longevity, which is what my why is now. You know, I went from skinny, my why for a good 10 years. Then I moved on to strong. I wanted to gain muscle. And then it kind of just became the, and again, not healthy, but I'm just talking you through my journey to make everyone feel heard and understood. Then I was kind of obsessed with being able to control the way that my body looked. I am someone that struggles with anxiety on the regular. I've had anxiety throughout my entire life. A lot of my anxiety stems from the fact that I cannot control things. I am a bit of a control freak. After I was so obsessed with being skinny and then I was so obsessed with being strong was the fact that I had the control to make myself really strong and muscular you know, for me, or I had the control to make myself thin for me. And I kind of liked that I had the control to do that, depending upon what workouts I did, what eating habits I had, so on and so forth. What pulled me through for the next, let's say five years. And then recently I've kind of just gotten to the point where I just want to feel good. I want to live for as long as I possibly can. I want to take care of myself from the inside out. And it's not so much about aesthetics for me anymore. I mean, I think we all care about how we look like to an extent. For me, that's not my driving force. I, when I work out, I am someone who has very nervous energy. So if I'm having a hard time, a way for me to cope, it's kind of become my therapy, is to get on the treadmill and just walk. I'm doing it to feel good. That is the space that I am living in right now. I want to last here on this earth as long as I possibly can. I want to be able to not only take care of myself, but to take care of my family as the years pass. So that is my driving force. So I feel like that was long, but I really do think that finding your why is really the biggest reason. If it is about aesthetics for you, I'm not shading anyone. And I'm not here to say I can do it better than everyone. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not a personal trainer. This is me just literally explaining my experience being someone who has worked out in gyms at home with weights, doing yoga, Pilates, walking, running. I used to be such a big runner when I was in my like skinny phase, when I was obsessed with being thin. I used to run, run, run so many miles. Now I don't even run at all. Say you wanna build your booty, that's cool. You know, I am here to support you. I'm here to tell you that you can grow your booty, but use whatever your why is as the driving factor to get this to become a habit. I would say number two is to really get into a routine. I am not a morning kind of gal. I have always worked out at night, but 
but as the years have passed and I have simultaneously gotten older, I've realized that at the end of the day, I just like don't have the energy that I used to have when I was in my 20s. It's crazy to me to like, I was really into boxing for a bit. Like I would come home from work, change into my workout clothes, drive to the gym and I would work out from like 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. five days a week. And that was insane. Creating a routine for me, I really wanted it to be a morning routine, even though I'm not a morning person. I think you should ease into any fitness journey, no matter what. So if you want to work out in the mornings, start waking up. 20 minutes earlier than when you normally wake up. Set your alarm. Put on your gym clothes as soon as you wake up and then do something active. You don't need to start with a hit class. You don't need to start with a strength train. You don't need to start with a split kind of workout. I'm sorry if you hear the rain, it's absolutely pouring. But get on the treadmill and just start making moving your body a habit. So I would wake up 20 minutes early, I would walk for 10 minutes and then do what you will with the other 10 minutes. Just get into that habit of waking up, putting on your workout clothes and moving. If you have not read Atomic Habits, it is one of the best books I've ever read. It has really changed my life. I'm not gonna go too much into it in this video because there are so many videos on it and you can also just read the book. There are triggers in your life that you can do. So like for me, I like to put on my workout clothes at night because I'm not a morning person so that when I wake up, I see my workout clothes, I put my workout clothes on, and that's kind of like an indicator to start moving my body. If you're someone that likes to work out after your day is over, what I would suggest is come home, put your workout clothes on ASAP as soon as you get into the house. This way you're not getting into bed and lounging, you're not sitting on the couch and turning on your TV. Make it so that you put the workout clothes on and that is your cue to then go work out. So, you know, and I... I really firmly do not think that any time, again, I'm not a nutritionist or a fitness trainer, so take with it, take it as, take it with a grain of salt, but however that saying is, I don't think it matters what time of day you work out. I just think so long as you move your body for 30 minutes, no matter what that is, great. Find what workouts speak to you. Again, I have tried so many workouts throughout the last few decades from running, hit workouts, to boxing, to Pilates, to yoga, to strength training, whatever it is that you enjoy in order to make working out a habit, do the things that you enjoy. If you enjoy yoga, do yoga for the next 30 days and get that to be your habit. Lifting weights is the best for your longevity. I just feel as though, you know, you read articles and as you age, your bone density decreases. And I just think muscle mass will carry you further along in life. If you are getting into a workout routine, you've never been in a workout routine before and you love yoga, do yoga. As soon as you've gotten yoga down as a habit, start trying to incorporate a little bit of weight lifting. I think it is the best thing you could possibly do. And I would as always recommend doing Sydney Cummings. She does free workouts here on YouTube and she incorporates a lot of strength training. Track what you are eating. I'm not saying go on a diet, but I would download the MyFitnessPal app. That is personally my favorite app. You don't need to pay for it, it is free. And what I did when I first started with MyFitnessPal, I did not restrict what I was eating. I simply just entered in the app what I was eating every single day. I did that for about a week and then I looked at my macros. If you don't know what macros are, that is the percentage breakdown of fat, protein, and carbs. So that that is just the percentage of how much those three categories take up of your overall diet. And I realized I don't need enough carbs. I eat no protein at all and I eat so much fat. And it was insane to me that my fat was made up of like 60%. Now what I like to do in terms of my macros and everyone is different, I don't calorie count, but if you are trying to lose weight, you always wanna be in a calorie deficit until you get to your goal weight. And then you wanna just kind of, you can play around in the app. You could put in how much you weigh, how much you wanna lose, and the app will tell you how many calories a day you should be consuming. And then there's also a, a macro tab that will tell you your breakdown. I'm just working on body composition, which is why macros is most important to me. I wanna gain muscle and I wanna lean out. I like to do 50% carbs, 25 to 30% protein, and then the rest I like to do fat. It is really eye-opening to see what you are eating every day, how many calories you're eating every day, and what it is comprised of because for the longest time I thought that I was a really 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 healthy eater and that just kind of was like a spotlight on my diet to say to me like listen you're not as healthy as you could be. I also think it's important to really make a mental note of what a serving of something looks like. If you're gonna have chips don't deny yourself. I am a firm believer that you should not deny yourself the things that you want because when you strip your diet of all the things that you enjoy it doesn't make it a lifestyle and I think in order to make working 
out a part of your every day. And I'm not saying to work out seven days a week, but just that active kind of lifestyle. It needs to be reasonable and it needs to be sustainable. If you're gonna have a bag of chips, don't eat the bag of chips. Count out the servings. You guys know on the back, there are the nutrition facts. If it says that 12 chips are in one serving, I literally suggest to you, and I do this all the time. I just had pretzels downstairs. I opened the bag, there are 10 pretzels in a serving. I decided that in my macros today, I could have two servings, so counted 20 pretzels. I put them on a plate and that was my serving and I put the rest of them away. Try to have one serving of whatever it is you're eating. You will be surprised at how little a serving is and how much you've been eating of each and everything. You know, with me, cheese was such an eye opener. I love cheese, okay? One ounce of cheese is not a lot of cheese. I thought I was eating healthy. I was eating like four, five ounces of cheese a day, which has a lot of fat and not enough protein. So I would just highly recommend downloading my fitness pal and seeing what it is you're eating on a day-to-day -day basis. You will be surprised and that will be a really good indicator as to how you can make small changes. I also always say it's hard and I don't not eat processed foods at all, but I do try to cut back. Processed foods are terrible for you. Eat a lot of protein, but also when you're eating a lot of protein, make sure you're eating your fruits and veggies to really get that fiber because protein can be really, really hard to digest if you don't have enough fiber in your stomach. Cheat days are a terrible idea. I don't think you should cheat the whole day. Have a cheat meal. I'm on a vacation unless Miguel gets pancakes. Wow, that bacon is like it could be once a week, it could be twice a week. Bouncing back from a cheat day is so much harder than bouncing back from a cheat meal. If you're eating healthy regularly, a cheat meal isn't gonna throw off your digestion too much. Don't have a cheat day, have a cheat meal, and you will mentally feel so much better and physically feel so much better. Another thing that will help you mentally and physically is to not compare yourself to others. Like I was saying in the beginning of this video, there are so many people out there who dedicate their whole lives to fitness. For example, Cindy Cummings, I love her. This is her profession. And I say this with a Kardashian, all the time. The Kardashians are unreal looking and super, super attractive and sex symbols because their whole life is dedicated to looking like such. They have chefs, they have personal trainers. You know, if you're a fitness trainer, you're working out multiple times a day. You are well-versed and well-knowledged in nutrition. So it's kind of just like a hack, a great hack, but an unfair hack. And it's an advantage that these people have. But if you're someone like me, I have a 40 hour work week. I work full time. I commute to and from the city. And also we are all made up so differently than one another. Our genetics are so, so, so different. While my diet might work for me, it might not work for you. And so if you're looking at someone on social media who is jacked or some girl that just has like a supermodel like figure, a lot of it is genetics. If she's five foot eight and you're five foot, like you're not gonna look the same. And it's not even just about height, but I, I hope you understand what it is I'm saying. Don't compare yourself to others. Comparing yourself to others sucks all the joy out of your own life. You can only compare yourself to you. So I would suggest at the beginning of your fitness journey, take Take a picture of you and use that as inspiration for a before and after. Once you start a fitness journey, results are not instant. And I feel like that's kind of hard in today's day and age because social media, I feel like is an instant gratification. You put up a picture and it's like, 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 like. It's gonna take about three months for you to see a difference in your body composition. And, but once you see those results, that alone is motivation and what pushes you forward because you kind of get addicted to the results. If you work so hard for the past three months in order to gain that muscle, you're not gonna be so willing to lose the muscle by being stagnant and not moving and stopping your workout routine. I also think it's important to highlight the fact that the working out is just a portion of your results. I feel like we don't talk about recovery enough. Recovery can consist of many things. Stretching, that could just be a 20 minute stretch, a 10 minute stretch, it could be meditation, soaking in the tub, it could be walking, you know, you don't wanna be stagnant for too long. Making sure you get enough sleep. You need to support your workouts with your lifestyle. I could wake up in the morning and do a 45 minute workout and then go for an hour walk. Okay, that's like almost two hours, but that's still 22 hours left in the day that I need to support that workout and support my healthy lifestyle. For the longest time, especially during COVID, I used to do my Sydney Cummings workouts. I've been doing her workouts for years. So in 2020, I would go in the basement, I would do my 45 minute workout, and then I would sit on my ass all day long. And that did not support my lifestyle. I was not eating well. I was not drinking enough water. I was drinking alcohol because there was nothing else to do. I was taking care of my body for two two hours out of the day and then shitting on my body for the last 22 hours. Not overdoing it. I think that the culture that we're in, the fact that social media just feeds us nonstop things,
things like you'll follow someone on social media and it looks like they work out seven days a week you need at least one or two rest days a week and when i say rest day like an active rest day go for a walk but you should be hitting the gym seven days a week that's just not good when you're lifting you're tearing down your muscles when you're working out you're tearing down your muscles you need to give your muscles the chance to rebuild themselves before you tear them if you just keep tearing them tearing them tearing them you're just really what you're doing is increasing the risk of injury and then that's going to derail your fitness journey believe me before i started sydney coming summertime fine i had a hip injury i hurt myself I woke up one morning <laughs> and my hip just hurt. I went to physical therapy for about five or six weeks. I just had to ease myself into it. And I really think that this is the biggest thing for me that has shifted so much in recent years, but it's really your mindset. I was always an all or nothing kind of girl. I'm not kidding. I've always had a planner. I love a planner and I would write, I would pick a day in my planner and write healthy in the planner. I would do great for about a week. And then on the eighth day, I would eat like a shit meal or I would skip my workout and then I would go on my planner and I would erase that healthy day and I would cross it out of my planner and I would just feel so terrible about myself. I would feel like such a failure. That's not a good mindset to have. You know, life, God willing, is an ongoing journey and we're going to have bad days and we're going to have good days, whether it's fitness related, whether it's just life related, job related, personal life related. There are good days and there are bad days. Just because you had a cheat meal or just because, you know, you had a piece of dessert when you told yourself, you weren't gonna have a dessert. Does not erase the days prior where you were giving it your all and you were doing your best. You can't be an all or nothing kind of chick. Fitness, life, it should all be about balance. So don't put too much pressure on yourself because the only person that will get in your way is you. So by putting too much pressure on yourself, by being all or nothing, by, you know, I'm only eating fruits and vegetables and healthy and oh, today I had a piece of chocolate and I feel guilty. No, you can't do that to yourself. Not every day is going to be your best day. And even when it comes to workouts, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, especially if you're a woman, you know, we have menstrual cycles. I feel very different on any given day. One day I will be lifting a 30 pound weight and I will feel like freaking superwoman. Like I am killing it. Like this is the heaviest weight I've ever lifted. And and then the next day I'll be lifting 10 pound weights. And it's just like, as long as you give it your all in the day that you're in, that is all that anyone can ask from you. All the stuff that I get to work out, I purchased on Amazon. I have a set of dumbbells. I bought a dumbbell rack all from Amazon. I think my dumbbells range from 10 pounds to 40 pounds. I buy all my workout clothes from Amazon. I love these little Amazon two piece sets. They're really lovely like scoop neck. I wear them so many times. I bought them in so many colors. And I think this set is like $20. I will put one link down below of all of my like workout gear that you can purchase through Amazon. I just do workouts on YouTube. So I do Sydney Cummings. She's definitely the main chick that I do. Every month I buy her monthly programs. I believe they're like seven or eight dollars. It's nice because I get the whole calendar. So tomorrow is Monday. I can plan. I have a 40 minute full body strong. So I'm going to wake up with enough time to do a 40 minute workout, shower, get dressed, takes away the guessing. So like tomorrow when I wake up, I'm not scrolling to figure out ugh, what workout do I wanna do today? Like, no, it's already set in stone for me. You're someone that likes to try different things, do different things. I just recommend on a Sunday night after dinner, when you're watching TV, get on your phone, on YouTube, pick a couple workouts for that week and put them in a playlist, like have a little playlist that's private to you. That's what I used to do. And I would kind of curate my own workouts each and every week, but who else? I'll pull it up right here. I, I just have an iPad. This iPad is ancient, but I will just pull up whatever workout I'm doing on my iPad. Channels that I'm subscribed to, like I said, Sydney Cummings, Fit by Mick. She has great workouts. Heather Robertson, Mad Fit. I was doing a lot of her workouts when I was trying to ease back into working out for my hip injury. Yoga with Adrienne. She has very um, beginner friendly yoga exercises, move with Nicole. She does a lot of Pilates, which I love. Boho Beautiful, a lot of yoga, advanced yoga. I love, she also has beginner stuff too, but I find most of her classes are intermediate. Eleni Fit, I love Eleni Fit. I was doing a lot of her workouts too when I was trying to ease back into my workout routine. I hope this was helpful. I had a wonderful time doing Sydney Cummings Summertime Fine. If you have never done her Summertime Fine program, I understand that it is August and it's the last 
month of the summer, but I would highly recommend going back and doing it. I will link Sydney's YouTube channel down below. She has changed my life. She has not only changed my body, I see the most results when I do her workout programs, to be honest, but she has changed my mindset completely. Her motto is happy, healthy, strong, and those are all the things that I want to be, and I just feel like she makes me a better person on the inside and the outside, and I want to share her message with you guys. If you're going through a hard time, I honestly think that moving your body is the best therapy no matter what you do but I hope this was helpful if you have any fitness questions for me please do be sure to leave them down below in the comment section I would love to help you love to answer anything if you want to see more fitness videos from me I don't do them often but I have sprinkled them throughout my channel here and there but if you want to see more let me know I would love to incorporate them I love you guys thank you so much for hanging out with me and I really really hope to see you in my next one bye guys Mwah.